Unreal Blueprints, Input Modes and Menus. So let's review a little bit about what we know about Unreal Blueprints, Inputs and Menus. So let's start with what we know. First, we know a widget is a collection of user interface elements. We've previously seen that in another video. We can create a widget and it gives us access to the designer mode, allowing us to arrange those user input elements, and also graph mode, allowing us to set up various scripting things. And of course, we know we can create a new widget blueprint in the content browser. We also know to use a widget, it's a two-step process. We have to create the widget and then we have to add it to the viewport to actually see it. So let's kind of take that knowledge and our previous use of blueprints working with input modes and think about working with input modes and using menus more generally. So when we're using UI, we often want to navigate between menus and buttons using controller or keyboard or various things like that. The problem is, is the game also wants to do that. So for example, if we're pressing buttons, if we're moving around in the game, we want the game input to do that. But sometimes we want to use that input in user interfaces. So to help with this, Unreal has two different modes. It has UI mode and game mode. So when we set Unreal to use UI mode, the user interface elements, the widgets, get the focus of the input. When we are in game mode, the game gets the focus of the input, and the UI does not. So we need to be careful then when we're working with menus to start to think about input modes. Are we in game input mode or, or are we in UI input mode? And these are two different things, two different possibility modes to shift user input. We also need to start thinking about where we access input modes from. So remember we have sort of two different options, well three different options if we want to think about it. We have access to game instance, so that's the game layer. We have access to the level blueprint, so that's a possibility. And we have access to actor blueprints, and that's a possibility. And we've seen previously how we could press a button and a menu could show up, but that doesn't really help us that much. Sometimes we want a situation where we want a menu to come up and then go back down or switch various input modes. So we kind of have an overriding question. Where do we put our menu nodes? Where does this exist? So as I was discussing, we now have access to game instance. This is the game layer. So frequently, this will actually be a pretty good place to put the calling of the menu. Anything that would exist outside of a level would exist in game instance, which makes it currently a really good candidate for this functionality. However, there's a little bit of a problem. Game instance, because it's at the game layer, exists above the level layer and the actor layer and can't get input, which totally makes sense. It's the game instance. It's the game outside of any level, outside of any input. But what it can do is create custom events. So remember back when we were talking about direct communication pattern. This is the calling of a custom event from another blueprint. So what we can do then is we can put our menu creation code in the game layer with the game instance blueprint. We can then create a custom event to create that menu. And then somewhere else, we can just then call that custom event to queue that up. So we can still work with, work with whatever input we want, wherever we want, and then just use game instance and its own code to do that for us. And this allows us to break this up a little bit. But it also, again, gets into this conversation of input mode. Are we in game input mode or UI input mode? And so before we move to Unreal, we need to remember one last thing from a previous video. We want to remove a widget. We're actually using the functionality of remove from parent. And you see the comment here that has the four existing nodes. And we previously saw this. When we clicked on the close, it removed the parent. Also, get the player controller and set the input mode to game only, returning us back to where we were. We press a button, we switch to input mode for the UI, we do stuff with the UI, we click a button, it goes back to game mode and the UI disappears. So let's move over to Unreal and kind of talk through what I've just shown you. So what we want to do then is we want to start to think about where our menu nodes will be 
and then shift over to creating that custom event within game instance, because currently that's the best candidate for where that functionality should be. So let's move over to Unreal. So you can see here, I've already opened up something I've called main menu, and it is a widget we know because it has a designer and graph. And we currently see uh, quit game button and close menu. So two different buttons with two different functionalities. And so let's move over to designer. We see text and quit, which we've previously seen. So come over here then, we see if we click on one button, the quick button, it will quit the game. If we click down here for the close menu button, which is this right here, it will close the menu. And it'll close the menu by removing from the parent and setting the input mode back to game. So the input mode will transfer back to the game mode instead of the UI mode. But we need some way to kind of call this widget. So I'm gonna minimize this for a second and let's step back from what we were talking about. I was saying that we could press a button in the level blueprint and it produce a menu, but that's not actually a great place for it. Because often we are in situations where we might have multiple levels and it would make sense to put that functionality in any one level because then the other levels couldn't access it. So that makes it a great candidate for game instance. So let's start there and kind of work our way back. So we want to create a new game instance and we know from a previous video it's kind of a multi-step process. First one we're going to do is create a game instance blueprint. So let's go ahead and do that. Down here in the content browser, I want to go ahead and create a new blueprint class. This will be a subclass, and it's going to skip over common classes, come here to all classes, and I will type in game instance, and I went game instance and not platform game instance. And then I like calling this global store. That's just my own little tick because it is global outside everything else and it's going to store a thing for us, but you could obviously call this other things. So we have this game instance. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Okay, so we have a blueprint, a blueprint for the game instance right here, and we can save it. But we remember previously when we worked with game instance, it's actually again a multi-step process, and that was just the first step. So let's minimize this, and what was the second step again? All right, we need to make sure Unreal uses the game instance. We create it, and then we make sure Unreal knows about it. So to make sure Unreal knows about it, let's go to our settings and our project settings, and then it's under maps and modes, and then finally game instance class, and we need to change it from game instance, which it is creating automatically, but what we don't have access to to global store, which is what I called mine, and will give us access to that game instance. So we will create the game instance and use the one that we just said to use. Okay, so now we can go back to pulling this back up again, and this was already open for us. So as I mentioned, if we attempt to do input, we can't really do it. I mean, we could sort of work around it and be like, okay, was well, this pressed? No, or is this pressed? And we could kind of create a really complicated, convoluted way of doing it. Or we could just create a custom event. Let's just use the direct communication model. It's built into Unreal already. So if we want that, then, then let's go ahead and just make a custom event. Add custom event. And let's call this Great Menu. And so what should this do? Well, this should go through the steps of creating the menu, which as we remember is again, a two-step process, right? We need to create a widget and then add it to the viewport and now also care about the input mode. So let's do this in sequence for, so create menu happens, next step. Let's go ahead and do the input mode first. So we want input mode UI only. And then it has some input here and it says, okay, what am I looking from input from? Which is player controller. So we can sort of drag this back, get player controller by ID, which is zero right here at the index. And that's the default. So we say, okay, for the default is take this input. Now next in line, we need to create widget. Create a widget. What are we creating? Uh, we are creating our main menu because that's what we want. Then after this, we want to do what? We want to add to viewport. 
Okay. And now this has its own input. What is it adding? Well, it's adding the return value to the viewport. So now, and I'll go ahead and save and we'll compile. So now in the game instance, there is a custom event called create menu. When it is triggered, it will change the input to UI mode. It will then create the main menu widget and it will add the main menu widget to the viewport. That all seems pretty good. But now we need to think about, okay, so where is this getting called from? This is a custom event. And so other blueprints could potentially trigger it. Well, now since this exists, the menu creation exists outside of any one level, we could just go back to our friend, the level blueprint. So blueprints and then open level blueprint and just create an input here. So for example, our old friend keyboard M right here. When this is pressed, what should this do? Well, what I want this to do is to call the custom event in the game instance. So what do I need to do that? Well, I need to know what the game instance is. So we're actually going to need a slightly different node first, because we're going to need to know what the game instance is. And then from there, we're going to want to do something with the game instance. So as we remember from the previous video, we can get the game instance, but then we need to cast it to our subclass. So first, let's get the game instance, right? And this returns whatever the current game instance is. And then what do we want to do? We want to cast to global store. And now we can connect the execution pins. When this is pressed, convert to global store. From global store, then we want to what? We want to create a menu right here. And this will create the menu triggering. I will compile and save this over here to create menu and trigger all of this in a row. So when we press M in the level, it will get the game instance, cast the global store, create the menu, which in fact is happening over here and all of this is doing. Then way over here in the widget, coming back to the graph, we will click a button, it will remove the widget, switch the input mode back to game. <laughs> so if everything is working correctly, what should happen is, I should press M, we should see the main menu, and it has input mode, which is a little bit hard to tell. I should be able to click text, and it should be removed again, which is in fact exactly what happened. So we worked with input modes here, and by the way, the cursor was um, hiding, hidden a little bit, and we'll, we'll fix that here in just a second. But we saw though that the input mode switched to UI, so we weren't moving when I was using the mouse. Then when I close the menu, we switch back to game mode. So that's the two different input modes in practice, the game uh, mode and the UI mode. So let's fix our cursor problem because our cursor was hidden and it was really hard to use. So let's reopen our widgets then. And come over here. Okay. So believe it or not, player controller right here controls the widgets. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. It has, it has control over the cursor. So let's do something a little bit weird. We're going to break this pin and I'm going to pull this out and then I'm going to say set. Now player controller is actually an object, which means it has properties. So if I scroll to the very bottom here, we'll see it has various variables we can change. One of those is to show the cursor right there, show mouse cursor. And what do we want? We want to show it. Now notice this is feeding into this. So now we've got an interesting new problem because now we want to feed this into here and this into there. So now what's going to happen is we're going to create menu it's going to grab player controller, change it to show the cursor, send it back into input mode and then do everything over again. So let's save and compile and come back and play and give this focus. And when I press M, we see the cursor. Oh, but look at that. Everything's rotating around now, right? 
But now that the UI is focused, I can click text and come back. And let's see that one more time. So what just happened? Well, this created a new problem. Because now, click this, press M, this, right here, and then close, and now we have a new error. So what's happening? Well, what's happening is a player controller is changing. We're changing the value of it somewhere else. And when it's making its way to then resetting, it's not the same player controller. So let me kind of show you what I mean. So let's come back over here. And this is correct. But now this is not correct because this is not the same instance going on here. So now we need to kind of do the reverse. Let's break this pin. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we need to do it over here. So let's break this pin. I always double check. Pull this out. Set. Scroll down to mouse cursor. Now this time it's off, right? And we want to do this into this, into that. And now we need to make sure that this is connected to that as well, which looks a little bit weird, right? Because that was our issue. So now we're going to rehide the cursor here. And then over here, double check that our, this is piped into that. So now it looks a little bit like spaghetti. It's kind of going all over the place. So save, compile, save, and compile and we will now minimize. So what did I just do? Well, I fixed the error and I also fixed another problem because one of the issues that was that was occurring is player controller wasn't reconnected back to the input mode. So that's what the error was happening. The other issue that was developing is we were showing the cursor, switching back to game mode, but then we still have the cursor. So now we need to kind of rehide it again. So if we play, I press M, we see the cursor and I'm not moving and I can hide the menu and the cursor goes back again. Press M, see this, press it, and it goes back finally one more time. So now we need to start caring about input mode, right? The summary of this entire video is we care about input mode. Are we in game input mode or are we in UI input mode? And then we need to think about where the menu is being created from. Is it being created from the level or from an actor or now from game instance itself? Remembering the game instance is at the game layer and is outside any particular level. So all kind of worthwhile stuff and a little bit of a longer video, but walk, walking through the entire input mode process, switching input modes, showing a menu, hiding the menu, and then coming back again to game input mode.